Greetings, everyone. I'll just stop that for a sec. Greetings, everyone. Sorry, I'm a bit late today. The time just zoomed past. Um, hope everyone is well and thanks for your patience as we get ourselves set up. Uh, it's just a little bit, 10 past five here. Greetings, everyone. Look, let me set this up. Just turn down some volumes. All right, I'm just setting that up as well. All right, so it's just gone five o'clock on the east coast of Australia in Brisbane, where I'm located. Thank you, everyone, for coming today. Good to see you all. We're back again with another prep hour with Steve. So um, can you type in your location and what the time is? So just type in where you are and uh, what time it is in your location. Now, while you're doing that, I'm going to jump on my screen here again. Just bear with me. And I'm going to go back one or two. Um, just checking on all the channels. It's 1.15 a.m. in Canada. Well done for being awake. Thank you for staying up late for us, Atif. Where else have we got? Philippines, it's three in the afternoon. Lots of different locations. Korea, it's raining. Yeah. Uh, it's 11.15 a.m. in Muscat. Hello in Muscat. Um, Chi Chi's with me in Brisbane. Hello. 1.30 in Myanmar. It's um, in Dublin. It's in the morning. Good morning to you, Anoma. Hello there, Jackie in Thailand, where it's in the afternoon. Hello to May and Muhammad in Saudi and Kuwait. Um, Chetna in India, lots of people. Hello in Kerala. Hello in Ghana, all the way over there in Africa, a long way away. Glad you could join us. Seven in the morning from there. All right, and I'll check hello to the YouTube viewers on the OET Center YouTube channel. We've got the Philippines, India. We've got hello to Ian Ujesu in the USA. Thanks for staying up late. Hello to Bangladesh, UAE, Philippines. All right, lots of people here. That's wonderful. Hello to Marita from Sri Lanka. Okay, we're going to do speaking today, everyone. But before we do that, let me tell you a little bit about um, where you are now and who you're with. So you, I, my name is Steve. I'm from OET Online. And I just want to tell you, um, if you're on your journey for OET, we can help you with a pathway to success. What do we do? Well, we offer excellence in e-learning. That means you can log on to our website and do all your study within one website with lots of act learning activities and video classes and quizzes and practice tasks all there for your convenience. A very good way to study too if you're preparing for OET at home, a computer-based test, study with an online computer-based course, everybody. Uh, we have a team of dedicated and passionate teachers um, that, who are going to help you achieve that goal. Um, we make our own material, exam quality material, to ensure you're on track. Uh, we have outstanding student support. We have a student support team who will look after you and make sure you're on track. And this is where you guys come in. We have highly motivated students. OET is a high stakes exam. So it's that combination that brings exam success. So after this class, if you want to know more about what we do, just go to uh, oetonline.net.au to find out. All right. Now, uh, before we go any further, don't forget, like us on Facebook and check us out on YouTube and subscribe to us um, so you can see all the stuff that we're doing and you'll be notified when we release new videos and so forth. All right, continuing on. So what are we doing today, everyone? 
Um, we're doing um, speaking and we are doing hepatitis A and asthma, everyone. Two tasks, hepatitis A and asthma. And asthma. We're gonna, the hepatitis A will be medicine and the asthma will be a nurse task. Let's go. It's speaking. So I'm going to uh, go through an overview of the speaking exam first, and then we're going to look at our tasks today, everyone. Now, the question I have for you all, type in um, yes if you've done the OET exam before, and type in no if you've never done the exam before. And then as we go through this page, I want you to ask any questions you might have about it. All right, so who will do your interview? Well, the answer is an interlocutor. Now, an interlocutor is not an assessor. They're just a facilitator. They're going to take the role of the patient. So you don't have to be worried that person is not assessing your English. All right, so that's the first thing. Getting lots of yeses and noes there. Um, I see a question there. Sapari asks OET Pharmacy. We'll talk about that later, but we have some great course for pharmacists. Check out that website there. Um, question two, how long does the speaking test take? It's about 20 minutes. You're going to spend 20 minutes with that interlocutor. Plenty of time to interact. Um, so that's how long the speaking test takes. What's the procedure? There'll be a greeting, a warm up. Um, that's just getting used to each other's voices. Um, that's not assessed. Then the profession specific role plays, which are assessed. How long do you have to prepare? Well, you've got three minutes per role play. So each role play, um, you're allowed three minutes to prepare. You can have a pen in your hand. You can take notes. How many role plays will you do? You'll do two role plays. Both times you'll take your professional role. And if you're a nurse, you'll be doing a nurse task. If you're a pharmacist, you'll be doing a pharmacist. If you're a physiotherapist, you'll be doing physiotherapist. And if you're a doctor, you'll be doing doctors and so on. That's a good chance, everyone. Everyone type in your profession. What's your profession? Doctor, nurse, pharmacist, physio, dentist. Type in your profession. How long will each role play last? About five minutes. So not very long. So you've actually got two role plays. You've got 10 minutes to demonstrate that your English is at the required level. So therefore, you need a plan, everyone. You need to be ready for this exam. That's why you're here. All right. So that's, um, that's what we're going to show you today. We're going to demonstrate some good um, communication so you can see that for yourself. So I can see we've got lots of nurses here. We've got dentists here today. A doctor, sorry, lots of doctors. Mainly, any, and we, I know we had the pharmacist. Anything else? Let's just have a bit of a look. Well, that's good. We are doing doctors and nurses, so we've got you covered today. Only Saparia is a little bit different. Okay, all right. All doctors and nurses, wonderful. All right, so um, let's move on to our next slide. So that's the overview. That's what's going to happen on exam day. Two role plays, five minutes each. That's 10 minutes of language, um, the opportunity you have to demonstrate your skills. Uh, the assessment criteria. How is it assessed, everyone? Well, there's two categories here. There's a linguistic criteria. And there's a clinical communication criteria. Now, uh, in terms of linguistic criteria, intelligibility, that means how clear 
your speeches. It's talking about pronunciation, fluency. You need to speak at a nice, even pace. Remember, you're educating the patient. So not too fast, not too slow, an even, steady pace. Appropriateness of language. That means um, the right degree of formality, um, but also not using too much technical jargon, using language that your patient will understand. And then the last one, resources of grammar and expression. Well, we know what that is. That's language use. And it's about sentence structure, questioning technique, um, articles and prepositions, verb use, all of those uh, grammar elements there. So they're worth six marks each, total of 24 marks. But what I'm very um, interested in today is the category two, the clinical communication criteria. This doesn't exist in any other exam. It's not in IELTS, it's not in PTE, it's not in TOEFL, it's not in any of those exams, but it is in OET, clinical communication criteria. What you need to function as a health professional. And I think if you can really nail that area, if you have those clinical communication skills, it can really boost your exam performance and potentially make up for a few grammatical errors or other issues. Um, because if you're communicating effectively as a health professional, you'll get a lot of marks for that. You'll get marks for relationship building, that ability to build rapport and establish trust with your patient. You'll get marks um, by being a good listener because you can understand what the patient is saying and respond to them. You'll get marks for providing structure uh, so that the uh, interview or the consultation goes in a natural and clear manner. Uh, you'll get marks for gathering information. That's your questioning technique. You'll also get marks for how clearly you give information whether it be explaining a medical condition or giving advice on lifestyle, for example. So we're gonna look a lot, look at that a lot today. Ayesha asks, how much, how many total marks are required to pass? Well, you'll have to, well, that information is not released publicly. So we don't know, um, exactly. That's what the examiners have, but I would say, um, above 30 would seem logical. So you can do the math yourself, um, but a B is quite a high score, but maybe you only need a C plus. What score do you need, everyone in speaking? Type in your requirement. Do you need a B or a C plus? For some professions and in some countries, C plus is enough, whereas for others, they need a B. And even some professions need an A, such as speech pathology. So again, it depends where you are. Jitendra says, I passed my OET. Your online portal material was a real help. You, well, that's fantastic to hear, Jitendra. Lots of people are typing in B. Yeah, B is the most common mark that everyone needs. All right, so we're all going to target B, everyone. We're all going to target B. All right, let's continue. Okay, here we go, everyone. Hepatitis A. Hepatitis A. Uh, I've got some questions for you that I want you to answer. Um, what is hepatitis A? We can see an image. It's a virus, a little bit like coronavirus there. So we've got a, an image of hepatitis A. Uh, and remember, uh, if you were talking to your patient and your patient says, what is hepatitis A? What would you tell them? Um, and we can see it's affecting the liver. So we got some questions. What is it? Where is it prevalent? What are the symptoms? How is it diagnosed? How is it spread? And what can you do for prevention? This is just brainstorming on the topic, everyone. So just type in any words that you have in relation to that. You can answer any question, and then I'll bring up what I've got here.
It's a viral inflammation of the liver, says Osama. Thank you for that. A viral inflammation of the liver. That sounds right. Viral infection of the liver. That's what it is. Where is it prevalent, everyone? Where is it prevalent? Where do you see this condition? Where does it exist? Have a think about that. Uh, and then the symptoms. And you can answer any of these questions, everyone. So type in any words that come to your mind. What are the symptoms? Getting lots of viral infection. Yep. All right. All right, I'm going to keep going. I know you'll know these. Where is it prevalent? Countries with poor hygiene. So it exists with poor hygiene. Uh, what are the symptoms? Let's bring them up. Jaundice, darkened urine, flu-like symptoms, loss of appetite. Here it comes, everyone. Fever, um, nausea, muscle aches. Chetana says it's spread by contaminated food and water, transmitted by the fecal oral route. That's right, Um, uh, Although you'd have to use, tone that language down a bit when talking to your patient. How is it diagnosed? Blood test, says Tina. That's right. And how is it spread? I think people mentioned that. I saw that someone mentioned that. Through ingesting contaminated foods and water, and I've got person to person through close contact, such as infected hands, towels, food, contaminated water. Prevention. How do we prevent it? Wash our hands carefully. Do not share crockery and cutlery. So all these things here, these are things that you would be expected quite possibly to explain to the patient in a hepatitis A task, everyone. All right, so really good for you, and I'll mention it again later, but do your research, everyone. Study the medical conditions. That's how you improve your skills. Research them, um, make notes, um, and build your skills. All right, now um, let's. Here's our task today, everyone. This is a doctor's task. So we look at the set. This is the health professional card. We can't see the patient card. Setting we're in a community health clinic. Now, the scenario a patient has come to see you today presenting with symptoms including fever, tiredness, nausea, vomiting, and jaundice. He has recently returned from overseas, but we don't know where. And the symptoms are suspicious of hepatitis A. That's your background, everyone. So always read that background information carefully. Uh, then take uh, the task. There are five bullet points. Take a recent history of the symptoms, the general health, recent travel, vaccination history, so that's some sample questions you can ask about. You've got to expand on that. Uh, explain that you suspect hepatitis A. All right, that's what we need. That's our diagnosis. Provide information about the infectious nature of hepatitis A and how it can be spread. We saw before contaminated food, water, poor hygiene. Inform the patient that a blood test is needed to confirm the diagnosis and emphasize the importance of resting in bed until symptoms pass. Okay, that's our task, and that's what we're going to look at, everyone. Now, Tashin says, hello, Tashin, how can you join the class? Just visit our website, um, Tashin, oetonline.net.au. That's how you do it. All right, everyone, let's do this one. Now, what I'm going to do today, I'm going to play an audio. So I did this role play recently with a student. And what I want you to do is just listen to this student's communication. And remember, we're looking at the 
clinical communication skills here. So I'm going to turn off my video so I'm not distracting. And I'm going to play an audio for you, everyone. Now, I'm just going to set up my audio here, make sure the sound is good. Just bear with me while I do this. One sec, everyone, just make sure the quality is good. Bring it up. One second. Okay, doesn't quite want to do what I want it to do here. Here we go. Now I've got it. All right, so I'm going to play an audio, everyone. And then we're going to go through this. Okay, so listen carefully. And on the right hand side, We've got a clinical communication skill. So I'm going to, as, as I play it, I'm going to identify the skill that's happening. And we'll just judge this person. We'll see how they're doing. Um, and Shanmugaraja says, I already know the symptoms I mentioned in the card. Should we ask them again? Yes. Pretend you know nothing. Don't say, from your card, I can see you have jaundice. Um, fever and um, darker colored urine. Don't do that. Ask the patient. Ask the patient the symptoms. Elicit it from the patient. So the, remember, it's a role play. You're an actor, everyone. You're acting the role. All right, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> Um, I've been getting a bit of a temperature at night, mm -hmm. and um, my wife mentioned that my skin's a bit yellow. I don't know if you can see that. Yes, yes, already. Uh, I, I know what it's like, actually. And uh, how can you have uh, uh, this content? Um, well, it started about three days ago. I just came back from an overseas training. Mm -hmm. So um, on overseas travel. Yes, that's right. I went to Cambodia. Mm -hmm. And anyway, I, I, I came back and it was after that. I came back, what's today? Today is Wednesday. So I came back on Sunday and, and that's approximately when the symptoms started as well. I see. Uh, just I want to ask you some question about your travel. Have you got uh, fully vaccinated before company? Uh, actually, I didn't. Um, it was a bit of a last-minute trip, um, so no, I, I didn't have any um, vaccinations. All right, everyone, there we go. Um, now, you heard that. So what did you think of this person's communication? Apologies if, if it's not quite right. Um, the audio, yeah, it's, it's reasonable. Um, but it's raw and it's real, everyone. So in the beginning, there's a question. Um, is a few little grammatical errors here, but he's exploring deeper. Did you notice anything unusual? I like this section, everyone. I said, I've been getting a bit of temperature at night. Patient went, uh-huh. And I said, my skin's a bit yellowish. Yeah. So there's that. That's being attentive, everyone. That's showing that you're an active listener. That is a good skill, everyone. And that's being assessed. And then when we scroll down a bit further, I said, I just came back from an overseas trip. And the patient said, so you went on overseas travel. Now, that is a core skill, everyone. 
We call that echoing. It's showing that you're paying attention. Let me ask you a question. When you're, um, when you're listening, do you echo like that? Yes or no, everyone? Do you pick up on the cues from the patient? Type in yes if you do and if you don't. It's a very important skill. Even this, I went to Cambodia. Uh-huh. That's building relationship. That's a clinical communication skill. You're showing you're listening. And then relationship building, I see Steve. So using my name, that is a good thing. I'm getting a few yeses there from people. Excellent. That's a key skill. Dil Ruba says, should I ask the interlocutor the name of the patient before starting the conversation? I think you should. I think that's a good idea, Dil Ruba. You can pick a name, but I would do that definitely. So echoing everyone and being attentive. All right, let's listen to another little section. I'll go to the next slide. Just a short one, everyone, explaining the diagnosis. Let's listen. Whoop. Actually, uh, step, if I bring together your uh, symptom. Whoop, that stopped. Actually, uh, step, if I bring together your uh, symptoms with then your history of travel to Cambodia, I suspect uh, hepatitis A. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, but uh, actually, I need to do some investigation or blood test before uh, to confirm this because it is very important to confirm it. Uh, do you have the same investigation? Uh, actually, hepatitis B, uh, I don't want to, to be very concerned, but you should take uh, the thing seriously because hepatitis A it is. Inflammation to All right, just a little short and sweet um, snippet there. But I wanted to show you that because it's um, before the diagnosis, the doctor gave good structure and summarized everything. So that's a good skill. If I bring together your symptoms with your history and travel, I suspect hepatitis A. So gathering the information. Um, and then explaining why an investigation is needed, emphasizing that it's important. Um, when I asked, is it a serious condition? The doctor picked up on my concern and said, I don't want you to be too concerned, but you should take things seriously because hep A is an inflammation of the liver. So good emphasis there, everyone. All right, keep going. Now, this is also from the task, provide information about the infectious nature of hep A. Let's listen. So if it can spread that way, I'm a little bit worried because of my family, you know, I've got my wife, I've got two teenage children. Um, can I then, if this diagnosis is correct, can I um, spread it to them? Are they at risk? Actually, I agree uh, with you. I'm uh, saying you should do some uh, protective measure. You and your family around you, because as I told you, this is a teacher's disease. So I emphasize on keeping your uh, personal things uh, only for you. And uh, please emphasize on your family. Nobody told to share your uh, good things and very intimate things. Uh, and your uh, water glass or butters, it is very important that. Okay. You know, we, we can do that. Yeah. yeah. And you need also to wash your hand before eating. The, all the family should follow this. I know everybody follow it, but it should be strict hygiene now. It is not because the situation is serious. All right. That was a bit, the tone was a bit funny there, but I think you got the general idea. Let me ask you a question, everyone. Is this student's um, language perfect? Is the language perfect? Um, 
what do you just listening and looking at it what do you see as the strengths and weaknesses and while i'm waiting for those answers um pimpala says i prefer to wait until the patient finishes his or her talking not interrupting um but going uh-huh yeah these are natural cues that show you're being attentive pimpala so it's a good thing to do it's showing you're listening don't have to but it's good and natural and that's what this person is doing is it okay to take some notes while listening to the patient talking well you can but i'd be a little bit worried about taking notes i'd be more focusing on all your attention on the patient so because if you might if you're taking notes you may miss something um, you may not respond naturally all right i'm getting some good responses there so i'll just play this last bit and we need also to follow some other measures like we need to have bed rest let me completely rest and uh, avoid any doctor but so you're saying I've got to rest in bed? Yeah, I think that is important. Right. Okay. I'm just a bit worried about that because I'm, look, I'm quite busy at work. Um, I, I, I can work at home though, but I do have some important projects that I've got to complete. Would I? Would it be okay if I during the day, you know, I just did my regular work? I think you. it is better now to concentrate on your health because, you know, this disease can be resolved completely without any complication if you really follow advice. And I think I advise you now to focus and give the priority for your health more than your work. I know it is difficult now uh, to... Uh, interrupt your work it is really it is really something uh, concerning but uh, i advise you to concern about your rest and uh, 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 after a while you will be on the safe side and you can continue your work all right good news everyone so this level you're hearing to this student has done speaking and passed the speaking section everyone so this is an example of B level. Um, and the good thing, the good take out for everyone watching this video, it's not about being perfect in language. It's about um, clinical communication skills, everyone. And that's what you need to be working on. Um, and now there's lots of other aspects to language, of course, but that's a major part of it. Let me just make that bigger, everyone. Someone said it was a bit hard to see on the screen. I'll just make that a bit larger. Hope that helps. Is that clearer, everyone? So that's good news, everyone. So um, check this out. If you're watching the video, play it back a couple of times. But this is good communication, good clinical communication skills. And that's what you need. All right. So that's one, everyone. Now we're going to do a second one. Um, someone asked, I, Bindu says, I have difficult to change intonation. Woo, intonation. Look, my advice for intonation, a lot of listen and repeat. Listen and repeat. Find your favorite um, native speaker, whether it's Australian, British, American accent, find your favorite um, speaker on YouTube, listen to them speak and try to follow that pattern. Listen and repeat, very good for intonation. All right, um, yep, I am gonna show an introduction, Shivani. We're gonna do another one, so let's move on. So we're gonna do nursing, everyone. That was our doctor's task. Now we're going to do nursing with asthma. Um, and we've got a good image here, everyone. We can see there are bronchial tubes. It's an asthma attack. We can see they're restricted. Um, and then when it's managed, they're open. That's lovely. 
All right, so what is asthma? A chest condition where the breathing tubes become narrow. Right, that's how you can explain it to a patient. That's not technical language, that's patient education. How common is it? Affects 10% of children aged two to eight. So therefore, it's quite common, isn't it, everyone? Quite common. What are the causes? Well, we've got having a cold, changes in weather, cigarette smoke, pollen, pollen from plants, pets, those environmental factors. What are the symptoms? Coughing at night or with exercise, having a wheeze. What's the treatment? Relievers, Ventolin inhalers, salbutamol. And action plan, give reliever medication, call an ambulance if symptoms persist. persist. You can get a lot of this information by doing your research, obviously, but these are the things that you can expect to have to explain uh, if a patient has a concern about a medical condition. All right, now let's jump straight into our task, everyone. So for this task, we're again in a community health clinic. The nurse, the scenario says, a parent is seeking reassurance and advice after her daughter has been hospitalized for the first time. So here's a question straight away. Are you talking to the parent or the daughter? Um, who has, so you're seeking reassurance and advice after her daughter has been hospitalized for the first time following a severe asthma attack. The parent is anxious about her daughter experiencing more episodes of asthma in the future. So there's a, a bit of a, a clue, everyone. We know that the parent is anxious. So that means we're going to have to reassure. So you can pick that up from the scenario. You know what to do. Yep, everyone's put that in. We're talking to the parent. So if your interviewer on exam day is a male, then it will be the father. And if your interviewer is a female, it will be a mother. So the cards generally don't have any gender uh, of the actual carer or the patient if you're talking to the patient. Task, we got five bullet points. Reassure that the child's completely recovered from the asthma attack. That's reassurance. Discuss the trigger factors and they give you a list. So that's expanding. Explain, so we've got to reassure, we've got to discuss, we've got to explain the prognosis, what's going to happen. Many children experience improvement as they get older. And that was proper treatment. Nearly all children can lead active lives. We've also got to explain the treatment about Ventolin as prescribed by the doctor. And you need to stress the importance of calling an ambulance if there's no improvement. And they give examples. So you don't need to create, you don't need to have all these ideas in your head. The card is in front of you the whole time. You can refer to it. It's backup. I'll also tell you at this point, you don't have to strictly follow that order. It's a guide. You've got to listen to your patient. And if the patient takes you in a different direction, go with it. This, in OET, we saw the criteria before. There's no criteria for task completion as there is in writing. It's all about how effective your communication is in that five minute period. All right, Rafia says, how can we start communication in doctor role if we see a patient in A&E? Um, well, I think just a, a self introduction, self introduction and, and who you are and how you're feeling, establishing what's happening and then start reacting to your patient, Rafia. Okay. Let's keep going. So that's our task. Now I'm going to play a little bit of audio, everyone. Now, apologies again. Might sound, it might be a little bit challenging to listen, but that's a good 
for your listening skills. So again, we've got a dialogue so you can read along. And as we go through, I'm going to identify the clinical communication skill that this nurse is doing. Let's try it. Good morning, Stephen. My name is Kasia, and I'm a registered nurse. Um, I will be looking after Troy today. Uh, how are you both feeling? Um, yeah, actually, pretty good, pretty good. Um, but I have to be honest, it was a bit of a shock what happened and having to bring Chloe up to hospital. Yes. Yeah, and how do you think she's doing? Yes, well, she's doing very well, actually. I've got some good news for you. She's doing so good that you, you can take her home today. So, yes. That's wonderful. Is now sort of, um, her breathing's okay now? Look, her breathing is very good. We, we've we taken her blood pressure, checked the oxygen saturation, her breathing, and uh, listened to her chest. And, um, and she's doing very well. She recovered for me. She might be a little bit tired when you get home, so she just needs to have a good rest. But apart from that, she's very good. Oh, that's wonderful. Wonderful. Yeah. Okay, you can hear a bit of background in that one, everyone, but that's like your hospital practice, isn't it? There can be a lot of noise going on. So Anusha says, how can a nurse introduce? Well, there it is, everyone. Good morning, Steve. My name is Kasha. I'm your registered nurse. I'll be looking after Chloe today. How are you both doing? So there it is, everyone. Um, and look, positive language, this is a big one, everyone. So the nurse initiated it, started the conversation. So always start the conversation and try to bring in phrases. I've got some good news for you. That is really um, reassuring. And then sequencing information. Um, a lot of information to give. I always tell... Um, my students look for every one sentence, for every question that the patient asks you, try to give a three sentence response. Your job is to expand and give detail. And that's how you can establish trust because you're giving really relevant and useful content. That's very important. Look at this. I asked about breathing, but she said, I checked her oxygen saturation, her breathing. I've listened to her chest. She's doing very well. Um, it's nice. It says that she might be a little bit tired. That's the truth. When you get home. So she needs a good rest. But apart from that, very good. So very good expansion there, everyone. Okay, let's try another one, everyone. Let's go to page the next one. So that was the reassurance, everyone. Now let's listen, describing the trigger factors. So this time the nurse is going to describe, as the task says, what the trigger factors are. Let's listen. Can I ask you a few questions? Of course you can, absolutely. Yeah, look, this hasn't happened before, as I said, and, you know, I'm just not quite sure what the treatment factors are with asthma and, and what I can do, you know, as a parent to help prevent What? Sorry. To help prevent any impacts. Yes. Look, Steve, I, I, that, I can only imagine this was a very scary experience. So hopefully I can explain this a little bit better for you so you will be a bit more confident in case this will happen again. So, uh, Steve, some of the triggers for asthma uh, include uh, smoking, cigarette smoking, uh, air pollution, uh, pets, mold, or even dust. Um, yes, yeah, so there is a number of triggers, and I think it's good if you can reflect and think maybe about the past two or three days and just think that Floyd was exposed to any of those triggers? Mm, I mean, it's possible. We do have a pet. Yes. Uh, so, does that mean this could cause it to happen again? Or? Yes, 
Yes, look, so there is a risk that it will happen again. We never know. It might happen, it might not. There is a small risk it can happen again. So hopefully it won't be as severe as it happens because we will give you a few pointers as what to do when she will have an asthma attack, if she will have another one. Uh, so you will know how to prevent it. All right, well done for listening to that one. Now, Praveen says the card says it's a community setting. Oh, yeah, just think that was a typo, everyone. This is a hospital setting. This is discharging. This is this is in the ED department after a patient's been admitted. Yes, yeah, so apologies for that, everyone. It's the ED setting. All right, so look at the – this is a real – it's good to analyse this type of thing because look, everyone – Look how much, how long the sentences are, really detailed responses. So this is a very good speaker, everyone. Um, lots of reassurance, showing empathy. Look at this. I can only imagine, I can only imagine this was a very scary experience. So that's a lot of empathy. And then the signposting, hopefully... I can explain it a little bit better so you'll be a little bit more confident. So that's signposting what you're going to do, then describing the trigger factors, everyone. Um, so, yes, very uh, nice communication there, everyone. When I said, can I ask a few questions? Of course you can, absolutely. So that's building rapport and trust. I might just play one more section of this one. I might jump through to, let's just skip this one um, and we'll do the last one. All right, let's do this last one here, explaining what to do if an attack occurs. Here we go, everyone. And if she has another and we mentioned ourselves we should be called the ambulance again if she has breathing difficulty. So, um, Steve, I will give you an asthma plan. The doctor will give you an asthma plan for Chloe. So, and, and an exact direction what to do as it happens again. So, it might start very mild, and it would be perfectly enough if you just give Chloe two packs of Benfoli, mm -hmm. and that will resolve the problem. Sometimes that's not enough, and if you see that she's stressed, that she's having breathing difficulties as she did this time, then yes, you can call for ambulance. Right, okay. Yes. All right, and then that wraps up what to do if an attack occurs. Now, I've jumped through a few sections of that because I've still got another thing I want to cover today, everyone. Um, but I'll just step back. Just so everyone, if you're watching the video, you can look at this dialogue, everyone. So this was explaining the prognosis. I'm not going to do this audio, but I'll just demonstrate it. A lot of good skills happened here, everyone. I'll just show you one here. Look at this. Um, I said she plays sports. Can she still do these things? Look at the response. She can continue with the sports. That's that echoing technique again. Very useful. Uh, lots of reassurance going on. Um, it says there is a small risk um, that, it, that there could be an attack but that's not to say it will happen to Chloe. So it's giving that reassurance, everyone. It's making it real. Uh, I'll go to the next one. Always good to study these dialogues, everyone. And this was um, nice, clear language. How does the inhaler work? So the inhaler will help her in breathing in a way that it opens the airway. Very clear. So the breathing becomes easier. So that's 
a skill. That's for you to study everyone and build that skill so you can communicate these things clearly. That's practice. I'm going to show you about that in a minute. Um, there's more echoing with sporting activities um, and positive language. Um, the, the fact that she will grow out of that when she gets older. So lots of, um, I like that type of language using words like, so the good thing with asthma is, so really nice positive phrase. Um, very helpful for reassuring. All right, so that's our examples, everyone. So now let's talk about what you can do. So how do you improve your speaking skills, everyone? How do you improve your speaking skills? Well, let's have a look. Um, a good way to begin, research medical conditions and learn how to educate your patients. Now, I'm going to talk about a book, everyone. Can everyone see that? This is a book, everyone. And it's called John Murtag's Patient Education. John Murtag's Patient Education. That's a wonderful book. Um, search it online at an online bookstore. But what's good about that is it's got hundreds of uh, medical conditions in here. And it explains in a very logical order what the condition is, what the symptoms are, um, how is it diagnosed, how long it lasts, how common the problem is, what are the risks, what's the treatment, and so forth. I wonder how many of you people know about that. Have you heard of that book? It's an excellent one. And what's the key for it is, Patient education, everyone. That's what you're doing. It's not going to teach you anything medical. It's going to teach you how to educate your patients. So your job, everyone, is to do the research. Um, research conditions common to your profession. Um, and I'll just type it in. It's uh, What's the book? It's this one here. John Murtag's Patient Education. So do the research. All right. Then what do you do next? Write out dialogues, everyone. Write out dialogues. That's your hard yards. Write out dialogues and then practice speaking those um, dialogues, even by yourself. Uh, if you've got trouble with intonation, with fluency, with pronunciation, with your rhythm, with syllable stress, all of these things can be practiced um, at home, using your phone, recording yourself, and just doing that over and over again will make a real difference. Um, then practice the role plays at home with family and friends. Uh, the more practice you do, the better you get. Uh, I've mentioned that, recording your voice, and self-analyze yourself. Just like you're preparing for a presentation, preparing for speaking, you can do a lot of the hard yards yourself. And then um, practice, practice, practice. That's the key. Keep building. And how do you know when you're ready? Well, you know you're ready when you can, when you're confident to handle whatever task you get on exam day. That's when you're ready. Um, and that's a journey um, and requires hard work. And of course, enroll in one of the OET online speaking courses can fast track your progress. All right. Any questions, everyone? Any questions? Now, Healing is asking the name of the book. I'll do that for you. John Murtag's. Patient education. That's your book, everyone. Check it out. It's a good one. I'll type it in a few places for Verbena. There you go, Verbena. Check it out. It's an Australian book, but 
It's really good everywhere. He's a famous um, Australian general practitioner. All right, so yeah, any questions ask now. And I'm just gonna tell you a little bit about our teaching team, everyone. So look, we've got a great bunch of teachers. You can see Gavin, Sarifa, Laura, Chris, Elizabeth, Catherine, that's just a few of them um, who are ready to do one-to-one -one live sessions with you on Zoom or Skype. We've got a really easy online booking system. Um, you can always get a convenient time. Um, yeah, and we've got speaking material for all professions. Yoji says, thank you. Oh, favorite online coach. I feel honored. Favorite student, Yoji. Well done. Um, and look, everyone, we've got virtual classes worldwide. So um, well done for USA for accepting OET. So if you're in the USA or bound for the USA, check out our courses. If you're in the UK, Egypt, Middle East, India, Singapore, Australia, doesn't matter where you are, you can do online virtual classes. Marta says, do I, there is a clock in the speaking room or I need to have my own watch. Um, I don't think you have to worry about the time. There may or may not be Marta, but the interlocutor will manage the time. You just focus on your speaking. Um, all right. Welcome, everyone. Now, a few questions. Is online speaking? Yes, Anusha wants to know about the charges. Look here. So we've got a range here, everyone. Virtual speaking class premium. That's got six-month access, live classes for speaking every week, five private 45-minute sessions, and then all our great course material, the oral communication clinic, with all the structures and language input. We've got student forums where you can find study buddies and all your profession specific tasks and material. Just AU275, Aussie dollars, not US. That's a great one. Um, virtual speaking class standard. Three, um, you still get the unlimited live classes for four months and three private classes where you can practice your role plays and get personal feedback. Great options there. Um, if you just want some lessons, bargain basement. Three private classes, $150, and you'll be doing one-to-one. -one. That's great preparation just before your exam. You'll get detailed feedback and grades. And then you, your exam's coming up very soon. Do our mock test, everyone. Mock test speaking, exam simulation. Really good way to check your level. Do two role plays in that Zoom or Skype session. Get the detailed feedback. Easy to book everyone. So you've got those good options there. Um, all right. Edith says, you've learned a lot in improving day by day. Wonderful. Uh, Bindu, what about fees? Now, I've got one more thing, everyone. One more thing. Let's just stop that share. Just got to bring up, bear with me, last thing to say, everyone. So everyone, this is our YouTube channel. Check it out here. This is our YouTube channel. Now, I know many of you um, have joined classes um, and joined our website. Well done. Thank you for that. Um, but some of you um, are enjoying the YouTube, and we've already done a lot of prep hours now, everyone, and we're happy to do that. But can I suggest to you, if this is helping you, or perhaps you've already passed OET, we do have a donation system, everyone. So... If this is useful for you and you're loving these classes and it's getting you ready, everyone, click on that donation button 
and you'll be able to make a donation, everyone. It's free just to share the love. So you can do a $10 donation, a $25, if you're very generous, a $50, or you can name your price. So good if this is helping you or if you pass the exam and you feel you want to give a little back, that will allow us to keep doing this for all the other people following in your footsteps, everyone. All right. So, um, but better still, just sign up to a class. But we do have that function, everyone. We do have that function available. Check it out. And that, everyone, in case you want to know where that is. Just a moment. I'll show you where that is. That, everyone, go to our YouTube page, everyone, for that. Check it out if you're Here interested. are some videos of page Oops. everyone for I found on the web. Turn that off. That was Siri, everyone. Siri, be quiet. So that's a donation page, everyone. Uh, it's optional. Up to you. No pressure. If you can, you can. If you can't, you can't. But we do have that page there on our YouTube channel. Um, but yeah, always just come to the website. Um, there's a free trial course, everyone. If you haven't signed up already and you want a bit of free material and know about how it works, you can do a free trial course there. All right, and we're done, everyone. Um, thanks for coming today. And I wish you a good result. And yes, um, Shanu says in the medicine practice book in practice two, I can't, not sure if I can help you with that one, Shan Mugaraja, but um, it's a long question. Um, I think we're done. All right, everyone, I'll be back for another prep hour before you know it. Um, have a wonderful preparation and good luck in your next exam. Bye for now.